Hi, I'm Keith Wilson. Today we're going to talk about setting investment goals. Ugh, what the heck? All right, Mr. Fancy Pant Financial Advisor. What do you, oh, my no. goal. Finish this bag of Doritos. This is why you need to set investment goals. All right, let's do this the right way. Hi, I'm Keith Wilson, founder of Wilson Financial Advisors. This is Millennial Money Matters, where I teach you stuff you didn't learn in school. Hey, do me a favor, do this. I want you to go out into your backyard, dig this big hole, and I want you to, every month, throw $50 into it. But don't take any money out until you're ready to buy a house or send your child to college or retire. Now that, that sounds a little nutty, doesn't it? Well, that's what investing without setting clear-cut goals is like. Now, if you're lucky, you may end up with enough money to meet your needs, but you have no way to know for sure. How do you set investment goals? So setting investment goals means defining your dreams for the future. When you're setting goals, it's best to be as, you know, as specific as possible. Here, for instance, you know you want to retire, but when? You know you want to send your child to college, but which, which kind of school, an Ivy League school or to the community college down the street? So writing down and prioritizing your investment goals is an, an important first step toward developing an investment plan. So what is your time horizon? Your investment time horizon is really the number of years you have to invest toward a specific goal. Each investment goal you set will have a different time horizon. Here, for example, some of your investment goals, you know, they're gonna be long-term. You have more than, say, 15 years to plan. Some will be short-term, say, five years or less to plan. And some will be kinda in between or intermediate you'll have between five and 15 years to plan. So establishing you know, time horizons can help you determine how aggressively you may need to invest to accumulate the amount needed to meet your goals. How much will you need to invest? So you, know, you can invest a lump sum of cash. Regular systematic investing is another way to build you know, wealth over time. Start by determining how much you'll need to set aside monthly or annually to meet, meet each goal. Although you want to invest as much as possible, choose a realistic amount uh, that you know, takes into account your other financial obligations so that you can easily stick with your plan. Hey, but always be on the lookout for opportunities to increase the, increase the amount you're investing you know, such as participating in an automatic investment program that boosts your uh, contribution by a certain percentage each year, or by dedicating a portion of, say, every raise or bonus, cash gift, or tax refund you receive to your investment objectives. Which investments should you choose? Now, regardless of your financial goals, you'll need to decide how to best allocate your investment dollars. One important consideration is your tolerance for risk. All investments involve some risk, but some involve more than others. How well can you handle you know, market ups and downs? Are you willing to accept a higher degree of risk in exchange for the opportunity to earn a higher rate of return? Now, whether you're investing for, say, retirement, college, or another financial goal, your overall objective is to maximize returns without taking on more risk than you can bear. But no matter what level of risk you're comfortable with, hey, make sure to choose investments that are consistent with your goals and time horizon. A financial professional can help you construct 
a diversified investment portfolio that takes these factors into account. All right, investing for retirement. Retirement may seem a long, long way off, but it's never too early to start planning, especially if you want your retirement to be, you know, the good life you imagine. For example, let's say that your goal is to uh, retire at 65. At age 20, you begin contributing $3,000 per year to your tax-deferred 401k account. That's a retirement account. If your investment earns 6% per year, compounded annually, you'll have approximately 679000 in your investment account when you retire. But what would happen if you left things to chance instead? Let's say you're that you're not really worried about retirement, so you wait until uh, you're 35 to begin investing. Assuming you contributed the same amount to your 401k and the rate of return on your investment dollars was the same, you would end up with approximately $254,400. Big difference. And as this chart illustrates, if you were to wait until age 45 to begin investing for retirement, you would end up with only $120,000 by the time you retire. So look, you see what's going on here. Start early. Next, investing for college. Perhaps you face the truth that the day your child was born, or maybe it hit you when your child started first grade, you have only so much time to save for college. In fact, for many people, saving for college is an intermediate term goal. If you start saving when your child is in, say, elementary school, you'll have 10 to 15 years to build your college fund. Now, of course, the earlier you start, the better. The more time you have before you need the money, the greater the chance you have to build a substantial college fund. This is really due to compounding interest. With a longer investing time frame and a tolerance you know, for some risk, you might also be willing to put some of your money into investments that offer the potential for growth. Next, investing for a major purchase. All right, at some point, you'll probably want to buy a home, a car, or even that vacation home you've always wanted. Large purchases are usually not something for which you plan you know, far in advance. One to five years is a common time frame. Because you don't have much time to invest, you'll have to budget your investment dollars wisely. Rather than you know, cho choosing growth investments, you may want to put your money into less volatile, highly liquid investments that have some potential for growth, but that offer you quick and easy access to your money, should you need it. Review and revise. Over time, you may need to update your investment strategy. Get in the habit of checking your portfolio, hey guys, at least once a year, really more frequently if the market is uh, particularly you know, volatile or when there have been significant changes in your life. You may need to rebalance your portfolio to bring it back in line with your investment goals and risk tolerance. Now, if you need assistance, a financial professional surely can help. If you have questions about this, feel free to give me a call. I would love to discuss your unique needs and circumstances.